This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome. This is Craig Thomas, your host on Much More on Medicine, part of Think Tech Hawaii's live stream series and assisted, as always, by uh, our engineers, Rich and Ray. Thank you. And with me today, Tony Maranaka and Carly Kreutzfeldt from the Aloha Medical Mission. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Uh, so the Aloha Medical Mission, uh, in full disclosure, I've been involved uh, since, I think, 1991. I've forgotten exactly. Um, and over that time, it's evolved substantially. Uh, when I started, and it's how I started, we were doing uh, medical missions, sort of what people think of when it's a medical mission. You get together a crew of folks, uh, uh, usually some interventional folks like plastic surgeons, ophthalmologists, general surgeons, ER docs, um, and a whole bunch of support staff. You uh, get a whole bunch of boxes full of stuff. You sort of uh, <laughs> assault customs in the, wherever the country is you end up, and uh, they shake their heads and wave you through. Mm -hmm. And you go to some place in need of service. Mm -hmm. You um, engage the local providers and facility mm -hmm. and do a lot of cool stuff, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was the core of Aloha Medical Mission. It's why it was founded and it's what it's done for years and what it still does. But over the years, it's also developed a couple other things. And that's really what we're going to focus on today. Mm -hmm. So. One of the challenges, as I see it, in improving health, <clears throat> with a, especially with a primarily volunteer and donation-supported organization, is you have to be able to identify a need that you can obtain resources to address, both sort of skill-wise, but also funding-wise, and match those up. And Hawaii, honestly, has very good healthcare coverage for almost everybody. We are, I think, the second best state in the nation in that, following Massachusetts. So uh, that's fabulous. Dental care, not so much. And so there's the need. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks to HDS and a number of other local donors, um, there's the resource. Mm -hmm. And I know that the uh, dental clinic uh, has been a major effort on both your parts. Uh, why don't we start with you, Tony? Yeah, so first of all, thank you for um, having us here and this of opportunity. Course. It's great to always share. Um, what you pointed out is very true. Um, dental care is a stepchild to healthcare. And so there is a huge need. Um, so around 2002, we developed a, a clinic and um, you know, we wanted to do so much for the community, and one way to do it is to have volunteers. So we have 16 highly skilled, professional volunteers that do dentist, dentistry. Um, and people wonder, how do you do this for free? It's because, uh, like you mentioned, the, the wonderful funders, the, um, all the individual donors that come in and help us. Um, so there's a lot involved. Um, not only do we do patient care for dental, we also have educational components. And one of them is called First Smile. We go into the elementary schools, uh, the preschools as well, and we educate them how to take care of their teeth, which is really important. Um, and then also we have a program called um, Welcome Smile. Okay, so that is for women who had been incarcerated or uh, abused, and so we provide them with free restorative dental, dental work. That's so very it's, cool. It's really neat that we're able to give back that way. And I've seen some of the before and after pictures, and it's quite stunning the mm -hmm. difference. So, uh, and what you said about good dentition being key to health mm -hmm. is definitely true. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, there's some evidence that uh, bad dentition is associated not only with, you know, it hurts, mm -hmm. uh, hard to eat your food, mm -hmm. but even things like heart disease, which is yeah. kind of surprising. Mm -hmm. But uh, the body is a more integrated uh, entity than most of us recognize. Mm -hmm. And uh, as an ER doc, I am well aware how difficult it is to um, get somebody hooked up with dental mm -hmm. services. So. Mm -hmm. This is a real need. Yeah, and, uh, but we also have outreach. So 
one of the outreach works is uh, where Carly comes in because uh, there's a lot of work for us to do and we can't do it just in our Kalihi community. Uh, we need to go out, so that's where. Well, why don't we talk about that? So Carly, tell us a little about yourself, how it is that you happen to be here from Minnesota. A good choice, I would say, right. I, I think so. Um, but tell us a little about yourself, kind of share your thoughts of being in Hawaii, but also what your role is here and what you've learned. Okay, well, I came here through AmeriCorps. Um, so I'm at actually Aloha Medical Mission through AmeriCorps VISTA. Um, and VISTA stands for Volunteers in Service to America. And then um, AmeriCorps is a federally funded national program. Um, so they place VISTAs within local nonprofits all around the US. Um, and the goal is to help build capacity of those clinics um, or of those organizations and also help them work towards breaking the cycle of poverty. Um, so specifically with Aloha Medical Mission, it's helping patients who um, don't have dental insurance or are underinsured. Um, along with that, they may not have um, the funds to be able to afford dental care, but then also other social or health needs as well. Um, so it's kind of helping them get back, um, I guess, into the workforce once they get dental care as well. Mm -hmm. um, so my position at Aloha Medical Mission is being the evaluation process developer, and then also working with community outreach. Um, so I've worked with a lot of the clinic and patient data and coming up with data reports, um, seeing where our patients are coming from, um, the patient demographics, so it really helps see who our target population is, um, where the patients exactly are coming from. Um, we've seen a lot of patients actually come from the west side or even all the way from North Shore, from Laie, um, so they really are traveling far to come to our clinic, which is showing there is a dental need um, all around the, all around Oahu, and then also all around the state as well. Um, and then with outreach, we um, connect with a lot of the federally qualified health centers. Um, so they're a little different from Aloha Medical Mission. They are federally funded, and they aren't completely free. They offer sliding scale fees. So. That'll be based off of a family's um, income and household size. So we work alongside them to um, let them know that we exist. We're there to help and build the capacity for um, accessible and affordable dental care within the community and connecting patients who need that care um, to our services and also the services at the community health centers as well. That's excellent. I know you have also been involved in uh, establishing connections with the various emergency departments because I'm not a dentist. <laughs> you do not want me working on your teeth. Right. So um, if you come in with an acute problem, an abscess or uh, that needs to be drained or, you know, a toothache that needs pain management, sure, mm -hmm. that I'm useful for. But then we need to get you to a dentist. and. Uh, that's, I know you've been engaged with that, and we were just talking before the show about how we might uh, booster that um, with uh, the UR nurses, um, or actually usually social workers, um, so that um, you know, get some case management involved and uh, expedite that further. Definitely, we see um, there's a lot of patients, like you mentioned, going into the emergency rooms, say if they don't have um, dental insurance or say they just can't even get into a dental office to be seen and it may be an emergency, they're in pain. Um, like we mentioned before, patients who may not have dental insurance may just neglect dental care as it's not a priority to some, some people. So they may wait until they're in pain to actually seek care um, and that may lead them going to the emergency rooms for that immediate care. So what we want to do at Aloha Medical Mission is to help be part of the discharge process of patients going into the emergency rooms. Um, and this will help reduce returning patients going into the emergency rooms. Um, since legally you can't turn away a patient who goes into the emergency room, but also you, if they're going in for a dental problem, you can't really, I mean, they can receive pain medication, but they're eventually going to have to see a dentist as well. So yeah. we want to connect them to services. Yeah, we're not like we're not likely to provide definitive care. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. we're happy to see whoever comes, right. but we really like to solve their problem. Yeah. So uh, uh, this is a, a vehicle to do that. Mm -hmm. What is the uh, average wait uh, after someone reaches out to you for services? Um, I think our wait list right now it ranges an average of. 
four to six weeks. However, we do prioritize emergency appointments. Um, they do allow walk-ins at AMM. Mm -hmm. So um, walk in if you are in pain. We'll try to schedule, like fit you in that day. Um, it's not always guaranteed, but they do prioritize emergency patients that are in pain. Um, but a lot of the federally qualified health centers also have almost longer wait lists. Um, so we are helping to um, build that capacity to hopefully reduce the wait lists all over. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, and Tony, you had mentioned earlier that you, I think you said you had 16 providers. Is that uh, yeah, currently 16, the case? Right, 16 volunteer dentists. Uh -huh. And so uh, we are growing. Uh, our average uh, was about 200 patients a month. Mm -hmm. uh, just last month, we saw 290. Congratulations. Yes, yeah, so what that means, we need more funding uh, for the supplies. Um, so there's a lot involved um, when we grow. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's part of the plan. So yeah, so let's talk a little bit about what your current pain points are, but also where you both short term and maybe longer term hope to get. Well, um, you know, the first thing we need to get more volunteer dentists in. Um, you know, we're looking for um, very passionate, most of the dentists are passionate, um, but also um, maybe near retirement. Um, and then we also need volunteers to help with the dental assisting. Mm -hmm. um, and that all goes back to funding uh, because we need to have a part time staff. Uh, to be there that is going to be held accountable to come to work every day. Um, right. You can't run a, a whole operation on volunteers. You mm -hmm. would wish that was possible. We supplement with yes. volunteers. Yes. And you also have an employed dentist. Is that currently the case? Yes. I know that's been true in the past. Yes. Yeah, so he is actually um, the dental director. So right. he and I strategize every morning. We sit down and we you know, have our coffee and we decide, um, you know, or we talk, discuss what needs to be done within the clinic, also with outreach. Mm -hmm. So there's um, a lot of uh, planning uh, with this dental, with this professional dentist that we, uh, that he's compensated part-time. Excellent. And so, Carly, your job has been to, among other things, evaluate the data. Mm -hmm. uh, what struck you most about uh, the operation once you started uh, looking into it? Um, I think just seeing how big of a need it is for dental care, um, that it isn't seen as a priority. So there are still a lot of people trying to access dental care and how expensive it is too if you don't have insurance or if you're underinsured. Um, and then also the gap. Um, so say you have public insurance like Medicaid, Medicare, um, there's, still so, there's still such a gap between where they cover and where um, if you're able to afford services without insurance. So there is, um, it's not as accessible, I think, as what I had imagined before. Um, but then also just seeing how much growth has been in the clinic. I think when I'd been looking at data in 2014, there was maybe about a 450 patients seen. Um, and now in 2017, um, this past year, it's almost doubled to a little of about 800 patients seen. Um, and then some patients come in multiple times, Got so it. there's more patient visits. Um, and then also seeing how far patients are coming from. Um, as, I, as I had mentioned before, they're coming from all over the island. Um, and then also some patients coming from some of the neighbor islands as well. So it's, so it's a big service. No, it is. <laughs> and you're demonstrating that you found a, a need you can address. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have to make sure we have the resource to do it which is Tony's challenge. Mm -hmm. After the break, <laughs> we're going to talk about uh, an ongoing project, uh, eight hours in time zone, that's a third of the world away. Mm -hmm. and we'll be talking about the project in Bangladesh. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. 
Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others, and in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities in their lives. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science, and care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational, so I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science. The same amount of time. Welcome back. This is Craig Thomas, your host uh, on Much More on Medicine. Uh, with Tony Muranaka and um, Carly Kreutzfeldt, that's two K's. Uh, <laughs> you know, these Minnesota names are challenging yeah. for us. Um, and before the break, we were talking about the Aloha Medical Missions uh, Dental Clinic here on Oahu, which is one of its two year-round operations. And uh, the other one is in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, that project, which was started 20 years ago, um, is the other, it seems a little surprising, so far away, uh, year-round project for Aloha Medical Missions. Mm -hmm. And it's called Aloha Social Services Bangladesh. And the sort of backstory is that uh, a couple years before it, Aloha Social Services Bangladesh started, we went over on a couple uh, missions. and. The need was impressive, and it seemed terrible to leave after a week or so. And I got to thinking, and it was pretty clear that there were tremendous medical needs, but the needs really weren't primarily medical. Mm -hmm. They were food, clothing, clean water, uh, ability to uh, get paid for some kind of work, uh, and a roof over your head. Bangladesh is a fascinating country. It's about the size of Wisconsin. During the rainy monsoon season, it's up to 70% underwater, so that's impressive. And by the way, it has something around 160 million people. Wisconsin has five and a half million, so it gives you an idea. It's, it's a fascinating place. It's, it's mostly rural. Dhaka is a, a big city and incredibly crowded, but most of the rest of the country is rural. But that didn't mean it's empty. There are people working the land everywhere and living everywhere. And, you know, going there is wonderful because people are people the world over. And it reminds you of um, sort of what's important in life and what isn't. I don't think the overall level of happiness is, is different between Wahoo and Bangladesh, as you would think. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we have wonderful friends there. In any event, uh, since we decided that um, nutrition, clothing, education, ability to get some skills was easily the big driver of health, uh, we gave some thought to how we might do that. And so what we did was we set up a, a local clinic focused on women and children and on nutrition but also set up a school. And the reason for the school was twofold. Kids needed to go to school, but it's also an excuse to give them a uniform, that's clothes, mm -hmm. and lunch, that's food. Mm -hmm. And uh, over the years, the NGO that we formed over there has grown substantially. And now it has uh, nine international partners, the Aloha Medical Missions is one, mm -hmm. most of the rest are in Germany and the rest of Europe to some degree. Um, it also has uh, three local Bangladesh uh, partners. Uh, Lions, for example, is now going to fund 600 interocular lens surgeries um, this coming year. And it has two governmental uh, sponsors in Bangladesh, too, so it's gotten a lot bigger. And it has many branches. It's got the schools, 600 plus students. These kids all get health care, too. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's got a scholarship program for about 50 or 60 kids after they graduate. You know, want them to keep going. It has a hospital, uh, which it does, in terms of outpatient visits, something like 3,500 or so. But it also does uh, six or 700 uh, surgical procedures. The nice thing 
about being there all the time is appendicitis can't wait till the mission mm -hmm. crew comes. And if you need a cesarean section, mm -hmm. you kind of need it now. Mm -hmm. And so um, we have a physician who works there all the time. She's a combination of a clinic doctor and a hospitalist mm -hmm. and assists on the surgeries. And then we uh, contract with local specialists to do, for example, cesarean sections um, or orthopedics or what is required. And it's been big. Well, you know, it's really interesting. Is it really uh, like $30,000 to operate the entire hospital a year? So you're asking an interesting question, being, mm -hmm. and being executive director, she knows how <laughs> this goes. So a law medical mission is primarily a medical related organization, whereas Aloha Social Services Bangladesh mm -hmm. has a broader scope. So Aloha Medical Mission funds the medical piece of Aloha Social Services Bangladesh. And yes, that's, that's what amazing. it costs. That's it's amazing. astonishing, honestly. That's, mm -hmm. um, it required some capital infusion to build the hospital, which is a uh, three-story structure. Uh, it's uh, substantial, and it, it works. Um, but the, the salaries there are low. Mm -hmm. uh, overall, there are about 250 employees, most of them not in the hospital. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the health outreach workers, the teachers, the community outreach uh, microcredit workers, those people are all in that 250. Um, but it's become a pretty big operation. And uh, without a law mission, it wouldn't be happening. No, without you, it wouldn't be <laughs> happening. <laughs> well, you know what the honest truth is? It's without the people working over there, it wouldn't mm -hmm. be happening. They're astonishing, and um, I'm, I'm amazed every year I go back, they do mm. something different uh, and more. So um, That's true, Aloha, is everyone is. is helping. Yeah, and speaking of Aloha, one of the great things that happens is um, they teach English classes in these schools. Mm. So you go in and, um, oh, let's say class four. So class four is about nine years old, they're cute as pie. <laughs> and they speak English. And so they welcome you with aloha. Oh. Yeah, it's really aloha. cute. Um, so uh, uh, it's a wonderful thing. Um, the other big piece is the microcredit program. Because mm -hmm. if you have housing, if you have food, and a way to maintain those things, mm -hmm. you're in good shape. And if you don't, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, access to credit is difficult in Bangladesh mm -hmm. unless you're wealthy. And there are wealthy people in Bangladesh, just not very many of them. So poor people can't get loans. And um, so there's a microcredit program. It currently has 11,000 individuals enrolled in it. This is about 40 villages worth. Mm -hmm. And um, they're on the order of, uh, I think it's 400 different groups. Uh, these 11,000 are collected into. And right now, I think they're on the order of 8,500 outstanding loans. And these loans come with a community worker who develops a business plan, mm -hmm. develops a strategy where you are now. Usually this is done uh, with uh, little drawings on paper mm -hmm. because people don't read or write. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me, and then where do you want to be in five years and how are you going to get there? Mm -hmm. And it's combined with a savings program. It's honestly, it's impressive. Wow. So um, the Aloha Medical Mission support of the medical side allows the other donors to support uh, the other aspects. Nice partnership. It is. Mm -hmm. So um, they're working on a 10-year plan. They're a couple years into it. And they're mostly ahead of target. Mm -hmm. uh, they are expanding their housing. They built some housing. There's 124 units, and they're working on 50 more. So all that's great, um, and we'll look forward to seeing, excuse me a second, <coughs> I'm sorry, I picked up a virus <laughs> in Bangladesh. Um, the, um, they're working on sort of ongoing plan. Let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit about uh, locally, what, mm -hmm. what kind of plans we're talking about. Right, so um, locally, you know, uh, as I mentioned before, we want to grow, mm -hmm. um, and we're looking into a capital campaign to move. Uh, and it's not a simple process. Uh, we we want to make sure that we're not um, misspending the donor dollar. So we're, we're, we actually found a really nice location 
which is still in the Kalihi area, um, and it's uh, with the Aloha uh, United Way. So another wonderful partner. Um, so this year we're going to be not only moving into a new facility, building a new facility, but also fundraising um, at the same time. So it's very exciting for us. Mm -hmm. um, a little scary, uh, however, um, is something we need to do because al although our lease is going to end, our services is not going to end. So it's very important for us to continue um, doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, and I do think it's an overdue move. The mm -hmm. uh, current facility is challenging, um, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> I think you've done a nice job there, but having a new, better space. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, it, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it, it's, an, it's an older house, and we're so fortunate that we're there. Um, however, um, it needs a lot of TLC. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so it's, it's just time to move, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just something we need to do mm -hmm. and soon. What's the timeline for this? Uh, we have um, three different funders that uh, provided us an award of $315,000. For our uh, for our capital um, improvement, um, they want us, or the location wants us to be there, um, like in August of this year. So it's quite aggressive. Well, that's exciting. So, yeah, mm -hmm. Lots of work. You know, I'll be fascinated to see how it goes, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm thrilled that that it's moving forward. I've long mm -hmm. thought that. You're filling a vital need. Mm -hmm. You're yes. connecting a resource to a need. And I, excuse me, I kind of thought the clinic was holding <clears throat> you back. So yeah, um, so, so yeah, it's it exciting. Is, yeah, it, it, it is uh, a great opportunity for us to have everything fresh and new. Um, so we are looking for um, m much more donors. Uh, we do have a constituent list of about 3,000, um, but we need more supporters, mm -hmm. absolutely. Always a challenge uh, mm -hmm. providing uh, free mm -hmm. education or health care. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. It was great having you, and uh, I love the Aloha Medical Mission. Yes, thanks thank you very us. much. And thanks for joining us also. Take care.